All righty. So we are here today with Paul Higgins. Paul, go ahead and give us just a little introduction here to yourself and your company. Yeah, great to be on, Darius. So Paul Higgins from Build, Live, Give, and I work with coaches and consultants to help them build businesses and lifestyles. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and all right, let, let's just go ahead and recap a couple of things we're going to be going over. I know you had some questions about uh, the Chrome extension for, for screen recordings, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I also some um, some best practices around uh, resolutions of like default resolutions of screen recordings and, and videos in general. Spot on. Good deal. Um, all right. So let me see. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you for, for most of this uh, as that's going to make the most sense. Just give me one second here. Uh, we're going to go to share. All right. And you guys can see my screen here, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, all right, so the way that the Chrome extension works is there's actually going to be a nice little video. I'm going to give you a quick recap here, um, but there's going to be a video that does go step by step of every little specific nuance of the Chrome extension. Uh, but let me go ahead and just pop them open here so you can see. Uh, actually, you should be logged in here. Sorry, this browser's been sitting here for a minute. Um, so this, this is a good point, though. If, if you open up the Chrome extension and you see that it says this message, you are required to log into it. And you want to be careful of something that you're logged into the same um, account on both your Chrome extension and on the website itself. So, you know, when you log into the dub.com website, it'll automatically log you into um, your profile. Yes. Um, my computer's having some uh, issue. You're probably like me, you got too many tabs open. Yeah, that may be. This one's also <laughs> been sitting here for a while here. Let me. Uh, actually go back to my other one real quick let me stop the share for just a second here sorry guys i'll kind of chime in here um hey guys it's ruben uh so <clears throat> there's a couple of different things that we're trying to solve with chrome extensions and specifically with our screen recording capability so you know we've invested a lot of time and a lot of money frankly into the dub chrome extension and the problem really that it's trying to solve is that people have become visual learners and uh people like to see things in order to trust them. You know, it's difficult for people to be able to make a connection with something unless they, there's a visual for it. So a lot of the value that we provide in business, it's things that we can see on the screen. It's um, demos, it's dashboards, it's PDFs, it's processes, it's slides. Um, you know, the Dub Chrome extension and, and also the Dub desktop app, because a lot of people actually don't know that we have a desktop app. So. To get that, you can go to dub.com forward slash desktop dash app. Uh, and that works for Mac and PC. And uh, I'll put a link just a moment uh, down below. But these two things are really gonna allow you to share your screen uh, for, uh, we've seen videos that go up to 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I've seen people as, go as, as long as 60 minutes. I don't personally feel comfortable recording that long of a video in the cloud um, because if there's a Wi-Fi you know, disconnection or if there's something that goes on, you might lose it. So, you know, in the event that you already have a screen recording from another service that you use, perhaps QuickTime, um, perhaps uh, Zoom, then what you can do is you can actually upload that MP4 as well. So, so uh, you know, so Darius is going to get into this right now. Um, in order to, to actually do the screen recordings, you do need the Dub Chrome extension. So yep. in order to do that, just either Google Dub Chrome extension or go to dub.co forward slash Chrome. And that's that's for free. You can get that. Uh, and then here we go with a nice demo from Darius. Yeah. So as, as Ruben mentioned, you can always just type in Dub Chrome extension. It's going to be this that link there, not this first little uh, excerpt, but the, the link here. Um, that'll take you to the place. It'll allow you to install. You'll also see my, my browser needs an update here. So be sure that you're on the latest version of Chrome before you do an install. Uh, make sure your browser is up to date, then install the, the Chrome extension. You can see here mine's already installed. Um, once that happens, a couple of other things as well. You cannot begin a recording on this page uh, usually. So you'll see get this message. It says, whoops, and this isn't anything with the bug or anything like that. It's just you can't begin recording on this specific Google page. Um, so you can, you can type in google.com and then you re record from that page, uh, but just not, not that one we were on. Okay, so the way the, the screen recorder works is uh, just give it a click. It's going to open it up. As I mentioned, you do need to be logged into it, logged into the same one you are on the website. Uh, you'll notice a couple of options at the top. Uh, there is a thing here for full screen record. So if you wanna record basically everything on your screen, including other browser tabs, if I minimize this, it's gonna record my desktop. Um, the only thing with the full screen option is you can see there's this little preview down here. This can either be your 
uh, profile picture or your live webcam feed, whichever one you want to use, or just your voice. Um, but if you're recording your desktop, the profile picture or the webcam will not actually be visible. So if I'm recording my browser, I do have this webcam feed on no matter where I'm recording. It will have to reload as I'm switching through tabs like that. So if I, if I um, am doing a screen recording let's see, and I'm changing tabs, it will have to refresh that little webcam preview here. Let me go ahead and show you. So as I'm doing a screen recording, you'll notice as I jump between tabs, it does a little reload like that. So again, that's not a, a bug. That is how uh, browser-based screen recorders work. Um, so that is how you would create a full screen recording. As I mentioned, that one's gonna record everything on the screen, desktop icons, everything that's going on. There's also a current tab option, which records actually just the current tab you have selected. So it's not gonna show your other icons. Um, it's not gonna show anything. You guys can still see my screen here, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. I'm, I'm not seeing a share my screen thing, so just was making sure. Um, okay, so. And, and Darius, is there one where you can actually select? So sometimes there's three options. The two that you've just highlighted, but the mm -hmm. third one is that you can select a particular area. Do you so have that, that as an option? That option is not currently available, so you wouldn't be able to do a, a particular part of the screen at this time. Um, yeah, it's, it's either going to be the, the, the entire tab or mm -hmm. the full screen. Okay. Uh, so at this time, the only way we would be able to do like a partial screen recording is you could create the screen recording on dub, but then you would have to use like a video editor, like an um, Adobe Premiere or After Effects or something like that um, to crop the, the video file itself to be a selected part of the screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that is the, the two options for full screen, current tab option. Um, there is also a little annotation tool on here uh, as, I mean, as well as some screen recorder controls. Let me just make sure I cover those real quick. So if I hit record, couple of things. If I actually wait at this screen before I've selected which screen I want to share, you'll see these controls appear here. Um, this one will allow you to expand the webcam. So you can actually start your videos with a full screen preview kind of like this. I can hit share and then now the recordings began full screen um, and then I can minimize it you know, to partial screen as I'm creating this recording. There's also an annotation tool over here so I can say click here for this, sign here, underline here, uh, you know, whatever I need to do. Uh, to make the presentations a little bit more dynamic. Um, so annotation tools, webcam, expansion, uh, contraction, pause buttons, and you'll notice keyboard shortcuts for all these things as well. So you can pause with the keyboard or upload or throw away. Um, just be really careful if you've done a recording, make sure you're hitting the check mark button and not anything uh, like the, the cancel. Um, once you've actually uploaded a recording, some things you'll notice is it'll take you to this page. If for any reason it ever gets stuck here, um, you'll make sure you have your cookies enabled, uh, make sure your, and if, if, if the progress is not loading, you'll actually get a message down here that says video stuck, download the original, and then you can re-upload it. Um, if for whatever reason there was a network issue or something like that. There's also sometimes a message that'll get displayed that said your video has been eaten by a unicorn or something. And that's typically a result of being logged into a different account on your browser than you are on the extension. So as I mentioned in the beginning, that's a, Pretty important thing is to make sure you're logged into both the same accounts on uh, both those tools. Darius, right. just a quick quick question. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes when you record or add a video up, or you record on the desk the web version, it brings up a screen mm -hmm. uh, where you can you know share it to email, etc. If you can't directly share it to email, yeah, that one there. So when I go uh, direct email, yeah. What, what's that actually meant to do? Because yeah, uh, I so keep trying to send it to Gmail and I just can't get it to yeah, work. Yeah, I don't know. There, there's, a, there's quite a few prerequisites to using this, this section of the site. One is you have to configure an email provider directly to Dub, which means you know connecting your, your Gmail account. So you're going to come in here to settings. Um, there's actually a nice video in our little tutorial center. Let me make sure I show you this guy here. Um, yeah, right in this eye icon is our video tutorial center. And there's going to be bite-sized videos in here for everything that the platform does, um, including the, the whole Chrome extension demo that I just gave you. There's a six, seven-minute video in here um, going over, like I said, really deep detail about how that Chrome extension works, each one of those buttons in there. Um, the other thing is uh, what we were just referring to on the website, um, this direct email send. There's a nice video over here, um, campaign management, which is going to go over those prerequisites, this one here. So the first thing is as I mentioned, connecting an email directly to Dub. So what that means is, uh, actually I guess the first step is probably a physical address to be CAN spam compliant. So you have to put in a physical address there. 
under campaign settings, you can come and add an email. You can use a Gmail or any SNTP provider, um, whatever you're using, you can configure here to dub. Uh, once those two prerequisites are met, you also have to make sure that the video is shared. This checkbox right here it says share with team and allow collaboration. This checkbox has to be selected in order for a video to be shared directly. Because otherwise you'll come in here, choose the email you want to send it from. Uh, maybe you want to send it to um, there's a subject personalization. Uh, and when I send this now, you're going to see it says check input because I did not check that box. Right. So, is it, would it help if that was a default? Like what's the downside of having it as a default? I'm sorry, having what is a default? Having that as a default set that that's always oh, ticked. This one here. Yeah. Rather than you having to, um, yeah, no, I, I would say that sometimes, you know, especially in our, our team settings, most people prefer to have their videos uh, to their accounts only by default. Um, so because if this box is checked, every video you create will automatically be vi visible to all team members and things like that. Um, but I mean, to your point, I mean, I don't, I don't see why it couldn't hurt to make this a, a smart switch to when, when you select that, that will be the default setting moving forward. Um, the problem is though, is with most of our other switches here, when, when you check one of these boxes, like if you come into your design and you set this as your default, um, that's a setting that you typically want to remain the same. Whereas mm -hmm. the privacy thing, you know, wanting your videos to be shared with your teammates, that's usually not the case. So, sure. Yeah, that based on that result is, is the reason we have that setting the way it is though. Yeah, and then that, that switch is actually automatic uh, for a single user. So if, you're, if there's one user on your account, that's gonna go ahead and automatically be shut off. Or activated. There you go. That that that's that's a cool thing as well. So yeah, if you're on the team one, this is this is a little bit more important. Yeah, great. So 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 that's excellent. So I've seen yeah. how I can record my screen and then um, I can send it if I configure it right. I can send it straight through Gmail. What are some of the other options then to send it? Right. Um, a couple of things actually. So you're a Gmail user then, right? Yeah. All right. So within Gmail, but who in small business isn't? With, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the majority of people at this at this point. Um, Correct. Okay. So if I actually have a direct integration with Gmail, let me see if this is going to load up. Um, and this is as long as you have the Chrome extension installed, you will have this Gmail add on available. Um, so here, as soon as my Gmail wants to load, um, the way this guy works is it's going to be uh, similar to our LinkedIn add on and a couple of other places. It's taking a sweet time right now I'm trying to think of a, how I can what else I can show you here in between that loading forever um, okay we were talking about resolution so yeah. that was one of the other points here the way that our platform works is whatever you record the video in it will be in available for playback up to as high as that quality uh, up to 1080p so like if you're filming in 4k we won't we won't support 4k um, we can do 1080 and so if you're Recording in 1080, you will be able to select the video playback as high as that. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean here. So here is a uh, screen recording that I created just now. You saw that? Yeah, Taris, if you can just go back to screen. Oh, not sharing the screen? Yeah. All right. One second here. Gotcha. Oh. All right. Uh, you see my screen, right? Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, this guy the road. No, it did not. Okay. Um, so back here in the screen recording, you guys saw that I created this guy and now um, I have a bigger screen. It's like a, you know, 17 inch or whatever. So I can select as high as 1080p. If you're on a really small monitor um, and you're doing a screen recording, you won't, you will only be able to select as high as 720. Um, so that, that's the only thing there with screen recordings. And if it's like a webcam or cell phone video or, you know, a fancy camera, whatever you're using, um, we'd be able to select as high as 1080 as long as the original recording goes up to that uh, resolution. Right. And is it you who sets that default or can the person that's viewing it change so it as well? The person on, on the recipients, and great question, is the one that's going to be able to change that um, on their end at the time that they're watching it. What gotcha. what our system does is it has kind of an intelligent delivery technology that it's it's based on whatever their internet connection speed and their device type is it's going to deliver a quality of the video that's going to be optimized for viewing. So if they're on their mobile data on a cell phone, it's likely going to deliver a 360 to really help that load time be very quick. Um, there's no buffering and things like that. 
Whereas if they're on desktop or on high speed internet, it's going to be much more likely to deliver them to 720. At this time, it's not going to default to 1080. Uh, by you know, it, we can't make it default to 1080 at this time because we've noticed it's a significantly slower load time. Um, mm -hmm. we've, we've determined that uh, playability load speed is, is a lot more important than uh, a little bit of um, enhanced graphics. Because both 720 and 1080 are both HD. They're both going to show you know fine detail on the screen in terms of like text and things like that. Um, so currently, we would only be able to default as high as 720. But as I mentioned, the recipient can always select whatever uh, playback quality is available to them. Okay, great. And, and oh, sorry, you keep going. Sorry, I know. I'm just trying to see if my Gmail is going to ever load here. It does not want to work, as it looks like. I've hit compose probably five times now. Uh, okay, so back, back to resolution. You had some more questions? No, no. So it was just about the editing. If you just go back, uh, just yeah. how you can edit that screen, screencast. Yeah. Okay, so a couple couple light editing features. What we can do is trim off the beginning and the end. So all you do is you move the slider along wherever you want it to uh, start, and then you click set current frame as start. Same thing goes to the end. If you wherever you wherever you want the video to end, click set current frame as end. Um, this does not edit the original file. So if you created the screen recording here, and if I go to download the screen recording, it is going to be the original untrimmed version. So it's, it's not actually editing the original file. It's just doing like a trim for the, the playback. Right. Um, so that's that subtitles here. You can upload your SRTs and then you can uh, upload a custom thumbnail as well, either a GIF or a PNG, JPEG, whatever you want, or you can use any point along the video uh, for that to be your thumbnail as well. Great. Okay. That would have helped me uh, before with a lot of embarrassing mouth <laughs> opens. Except Sorry that. about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, glad you got that information at, at least now. Um, okay, cool. Finally, Gmail loaded. So this is what it's going to look like when we're in Gmail. Uh, you see this little dub icon down here, right? Yeah. So as long as you have the Chrome extension installed and you're logged into it, um, refresh your Gmail and then you will have this button available to you. Uh, unless like maybe you have a, a lot of other extensions down here or some, something else causing interference, we should definitely have that button. The other thing is if you're on a really small screen again, it might it might hide this. So hit maximize, zoom out of your screen, um, things like that. So other way that works though is when you click on it, it will open up your library of existing videos. You saw that one we just recorded. So I can say a video for uh, Bob or whoever it's for, throw it in there. Um, so that's the way you're gonna insert those videos. So you mentioned you know directly emailing them here from the platform. Um, you might even find it easier to just yeah, e email and select yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And obviously you can add multiple as well from that. Yeah, exactly. You can you can select anything that you're already recorded, you just grab it, insert, and you can do it again. Uh, just be aware of where your cursor is, um, because so, wherever your cursor is, is where it's gonna insert that video. So you see my cursor's somewhere, like if it's right there, that's where it's gonna insert the video. That's not where I'd want it because that's in my email signature. Um, so just be careful with wherever your cursor is. You'll notice it also places some formatting in the video. So it's kind of hard to get back up in here. Like if I wanted to put in some text before that. So I always recommend inserting the text before the video. So I would say, hey, Bob, you know, check out this video or you know, whatever I want to say to him. Say the message, then insert the video uh, through the extension. You can also record a brand new one here as well. So I could just hit record and, and do that. It sounds like you'd be probably doing a little bit more of the screen recordings. So you would use the Chrome extension to create the recording and then you would insert it probably right through here after you finish it. Yeah, no, look, and, and I do both. So I do a lot of, you know, instead of leaving boring uh, follow-up emails now, I try to add value. So I say, you know, this is something that I've seen on your LinkedIn post that, you know, uh, nice. you could improve. I do something like that or I just do it to camera. So, yeah, I was sort of, I had more steps. So this has been really helpful because it's reducing steps and friction oh, wow. for me for doing it. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. The other thing you might always consider here is uh, let's just take a look at one of my, my video pages here. I'd just love to give a quick breakdown. Um, so depending on what your goal is, you know, we always recommend to have a couple of features on that page for people to, you know, to capture a conversion. You know, there's the ultimate thing we want them to do. Like in my case, it's usually to book a time to, you know, uh, have a consultation. But for whatever your use case is, you might have other things. You might be trying to build up registrants for like an event or a webinar or something like that we always recommend to get the most out of your video pages. So like everything on here is a default for me. So if I hit record right now, it's gonna apply this calendar, it's gonna apply our social proof, our, you know, our customer success stories, webinar registration. 
So I always re recommend having your video pages just built up with as much value as we can uh, for both you and, and the recipient. Uh, it's valuable for you because, you know, they're downloading stuff. They're getting into your ecosystem. They're becoming, you know, engaged. And it's valuable for them, hopefully, uh, because you've provided them something of value to kind of engage with. Excellent. Yeah, de so definitely recommend taking advantage of both the playlist and, and the additional CTAs. Um, so the way the playlist works is, you know, as soon as that first video is finished, it transitions into the next video yeah, really without needing to yeah. download or install or you know, click anything. So that's really valuable for when you have that. Hey, first name, I just wanted to, I saw your LinkedIn post, wanted to share something with you. Uh, let me know what you think. And then it goes into a pre-recorded video of you doing your spiel where, you know, it's maybe your two or three minute pitch that you've had for other people. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those are some elements of that video page. I, I highly recommend making sure uh, you're getting, getting the most out of it. Fantastic. Well, that's been really helpful for me. I uh, really appreciate the product. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got a hard stop here too, right? Yeah. It's, it, it's a, it's a great product. I know you guys constantly innovate. You're always taking my feedback on and, and changing things. So uh, yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. So if you're not on dub uh, and you're, uh, you know, doing any B2B business, I recommend going and checking it out ASAP. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right, Paul. Thanks, Darius. Thanks, Thanks Ruben. Paul. Cheers, guys. Bye. All right.